So I'm here in Alberta now with uh, Neek, and he's gonna give us a quick tour of his farm. So yeah, here, welcome to uh, Newmar's Dairy, and uh, we're just milking over 400 cows. Uh, we moved here in 2004, so we're almost on 20 years in January. And uh, yeah, we're here with uh, five full-time hired hands and the family itself and my wife Kayla and my parents and my two brothers. And we're all full-time on the farm. Right on. Yeah. And uh, you guys do have an Instagram for the farm, so that'll be linked in the description down below. So yeah. definitely go check that out. And you guys are also master breeders. Yeah which yeah. is pretty cool so yeah that was quite an accomplishment for the farm and uh, something we really strive for and a good herd and genetics and yeah everything like that so yeah it's awesome awesome well we're gonna look around Just, uh, we got 150 on both sides here um, all sand bedding uh, no scrapers just a mensch vacuum truck in here and uh, we try to keep uh, both groups. So we got our older groups, older lactations on this side, and then lower lactations on this side to prevent bullying and everything like that. And okay. Just keep knees on the cows, so yeah. So much natural light in this barn too, that oh, is yeah. awesome. Yeah, we love our natural light with the skylight here on a nice sunny day and when it's clean after a rain shower, it's just pure light in here, yeah. That was a good looking barn, man. Thank you. And concrete walls, it looks like? Yeah, concrete walls, not no uh, precast, just concrete, yeah. Sweet. And, uh, wood frame. Huh. Yeah. And uh, no tunnel ventilation. <laughs> oh, yeah, just natural flow. What's that? Natural flow. Yeah, natural flow, yeah. We got our big ass fans. Sweet. Yeah, we shut them off in winter. There's enough flow in here. Yeah, okay. It's open. Power chimneys. Jordan self lockers or? Yeah. yeah. Jordan lockers, nice and quiet. It's, uh, if these fans are not running, you don't hear a single thing in this barn. Yeah. Nice. Nice and peaceful. It looks like you got a, a curve here for the, the vac truck. Yeah. Yeah, we built That's it especially cool. for the back truck, just so it can go right in the curve, go in both ways, and right away, yeah. Nice. So we're at the other side of the barn now, and they got some room here for sand. And then they also got their back truck here. And you can see they have a pipe heater up there to keep it warm in the winter, otherwise this truck would freeze up, start a little tougher. That is slick. Tons of room back here. Nice yeah. barn, man. Thank you. in for the cows and stuff. Oh, that yeah. was the big reason for the mench. Yeah, so you're saying because you have that vac truck, you don't have to have such a high curb yeah. to keep the manure from going in the beds. Yeah, exactly. So it's like better for cow comfort. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. One more thing I wanted to mention with that low curb, he was able to drive over with their skid steer with a bucket to put sand in the beds 
and he's able to get the sand almost in the middle of those beds and that is super advantageous the cows are pulling it down naturally and they go through a little less sand than someone with a higher curb like our farm where we can't get the sand as far in the beds as we'd like and uh, they're just able to throw it right in the middle and then it's probably around I would say four inches of sand with concrete bottoms oh yeah Never hit the concrete, but yeah. This is their robotic feed pusher. It's a little different style than the one that we got. It's got the auger on front. It's pretty cool. And you say this one runs on magnets in the floor? Yeah, magnets in the floor. All right. So we just came out of that freestall barn there. And they got their lagoon here. Cows on the pasture out there. Those are dry cows or? Yeah, yeah, they're pregnant. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so we got our close up pen over there on uh, straw bedding. And then uh, we've got our maternity pen here. So after calving, they go in the maternity pen for a few days, just get used to the flow of everything. And then we'll bring them into here. This is our transition area. And then they stay here for a month or a few, few weeks and just get used to the TMR and everything before we send them with the milking herd. So we stepped over into your calf barn now? Yeah, this is the calf barn here. And then they come here after a few days in the front, from the front of the barn and they get on two liters of milk uh, three times a day. Yeah, and it's uh, all the individual pens. And then after we four weeks or something, we'll group them together, yeah. And you feed them whole milk, not milk replacer or? Yeah, whole milk, yeah, pasteurized whole milk. And some some good tasting grain there yeah we uh we went to this stuff this powdered stuff and uh after when we went from that we haven't had scours since and it's been three two months now okay without a single calf of scours hmm. so this is your oldest barn yeah this is our oldest barn this is where it all started used to be all free stalls here and everything and now we converted this into a sick pack over here and then on the other side of the bunk feeder we got our two-year-olds separated and then around the corner is our breeding age heifers yeah alley scrapers and you say you feed in the middle here with the bunk with the conveyor feeder yeah the conveyor feeder off the mixer wagon onto the conveyor it's uh, it's always a pain, but it still works, I guess. So we just stepped out of their barns there. And these are dry cows. I guess these are your corrals. Yeah, uh, yeah. Big shelter on top. Yeah. Sweet. So you're saying uh, this is your breeding age heifer pen. And you have deep bedding sand on the far side there? Uh, deep bedding straw. Straw? On the other side. And we got mats right here. And we installed the mats this year. But what we've noticed is I haven't seen a single calf laying on the mats. They only just go to the deep bedding straw. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess they don't like it as much as they like that deep bedding straw. Yeah.
So this is the farm's kitchen? Yeah, this is Ruben's kitchen here where he makes the loads for the cows every day. And that's Ruben. <laughs> yeah. We feed here, we start at 7 a.m. and we feed till usually around 10 or 11. And uh, yeah, this is uh, Ruben's position here and uh, he's doing a great job at feeding and we feed corn and uh, we do some barley silage as well and haylage. Um, we're all commodities here, so we make our own mineral loads. And we got canola meal and uh, nova meal and uh, rolled barley we feed. Yeah. Sweet. There's commodity bays behind the big John Deere. Yeah. Yeah, we got that in the way. We just had our guy, every Friday, he comes and rolls our barley for us, so. Oh, okay. And we just load it into Penta and dump into the commodity bay. So this is the calf run where they come after the individual pens? Yeah, yeah, and then they'll come here after they're done weaned and everything, and they'll stay here till they're around five to six months, and then we'll kick them out of here. We got a special cow here. And she is stubborn girl. She's, she's one of the oldest cows in the barn. She's 14 years old on her 11th lactation. And uh, she's just now at 174,000 liters. So she's quite a super cow and she's just in the barn with the rest of them, no special treatment. And she just keeps going every day. Yeah, she's an amazing cow. We got 14 cows in the herd over 100,000 liters. So that just shows longevity and taking care of the animals and then they can just do great and yeah. Produce milk. Produce milk. So this is uh, our parlor here. It's a uh, double 14 uh, rapid exit. And yeah, this is where all the milk comes from, I guess. We uh, pre-dip, wipe, and then milk and post dip. Westphalia. Yeah. And in this parlor, we're still able to do over a hundred cows an hour. a new site here and this is uh, part of our succession planning and uh, we're starting it off here with the heifer shed uh, 400 feet and housing kind of around 250 in there and then uh, yeah strictly for heifers coming in at six months a little breeding age for now um, yeah and this is bad what it's right now uh, it's all done dirt works all done for fall work and everything and um, yeah just wait for spring then we can start construction exciting yeah so that was the tour thanks thanks a lot for the showing us around yeah thanks a lot for coming out and uh, seeing what we do here sure no one's here so Nick's just showing me that I should have bought a diesel instead of a gas I guess yeah. Ha, 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 ha.